All right, let's start with first down. We're going to start with an injury. DeMornay Pearsonell falling in the second quarter. Looked like a knee injury. It's really a tough one to watch and a tough one to take if you're Nebraska, seeing what this guy has gone through. Yeah, it really just deflated the team in this game. I mean, Nebraska had some momentum. They had just scored a touchdown. And uh, from that moment on, you know, he went down. Uh, it just was a tough situation. And you feel for DeMornay. Um, you know, he, he worked so hard to get back. He was just getting in stride. And obviously now he's going to be out most likely. Likely again for the season, and uh, you, you just hope now he can uh, be healthy for next season. All right, second down. Let's talk quarterback Riker Fife filling in for Tommy Armstrong. 29 of 48, 407 yards, four touchdowns, but four interceptions. Where do we go moving forward? Yeah, four interceptions and a costly fumble that he couldn't jump on that gave Purdue really some momentum at a point in the game. Um, you know, I thought he did some things that you can build on. There's no doubt. Uh, he kind of has that Phillip Rivers weird release. I mean, it's not an orthodox uh, quarterback release when he throws the football. Um, but yeah, going forward this week, you have to think he's the starter. Uh, that, that turf toe injury to Tommy Armstrong, if you ask me now, uh, I don't have a good feel. All right, third down. Let's talk defensively. It is one of those cases is where the injury is just piling up and the attrition that you see. I mean, man, they keep coming back. They're playing with hard effort, but not getting results. Uh, the biggest thing to me, Andy, was the pass rush and the blitz. Nebraska uh, was not getting consistent pressure on David Blau. And uh, when he wanted to move around and operate, um, he was not really getting touched. And I, I felt like his ability to move the pocket, uh, scramble, kept Nebraska's defense off balance. You never felt Nebraska's defense had a control of this game. And, yeah, lack of depth, lack of pass rushers. Um, I don't know what it is. Coaching, um, scheme. I mean, there's a lot of things that I think you could you can pin it on right now. I think a little bit of all, everything, all of the above. All maybe the above. I take that. Maybe. All right. How about fourth down? Where do we go from here? It is three and six. We playing out the string. Michigan State. Iowa, two of the last three opponents. Yeah, that whole five and seven bowl game talk. I mean, I think that's going to get tabled now for another couple of weeks because that was something that was being talked about a lot this week. But it's not going to get easy, and and you know it's going to be a rough week for Mike Riley, for Sean Eichhorst, um, and and the administrative people at Nebraska because of the way this season has turned. You're talking about a team that returned 17 starters from a year ago, and they're in the cellar right now of the Big Ten. And I don't think anybody could have predict predicted this. Uh, Mike Riley. He continues to keep a professional, classy approach with how he's dealing with everybody. Uh, but there's no doubt this will be the roughest week he's had here in Lincoln. Well, we will see how it all shakes out. Nebraska hosts Michigan State next Saturday at Memorial Stadium. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, uh, Andy. Good stuff there. Thanks. Speaking of that Michigan State game, Huskers and sixth ranked Spartans kicking off at 6 o'clock in Memorial Stadium. That game will be on ESPN.